Hello my friends, welcome to another exciting episode in our Photoshop design series. In this video, I'm walking you through the process of creating a spot poster like this inside of Photoshop, right? Now, if you've not gotten your Smart Designer Premium Asset, it's still very much available. This asset is power packed with images, templates, backgrounds, and also effects, 3D effects like this, right? So, and also, if you have not gotten your sci-fi fantasy and all of these remaining templates you can use the link in the description of this video to get yours and if you've not subscribed why not hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any videos that will drop dropping anytime from now without having to say much let's get started so the first thing you want to do is click on file and um, i'm just going to make my size four by five inches resolution 300 and of course transparent here rgb color mode and everything else stays the same and click on create right so when you open up a photoshop you are greeted with this interface right so what i'm going to do first is click on solid adjustments solid color like this um adjustment layer solid color and um, the most important thing is your foreground and background color right make sure your foreground this is the color code you're using Right, click OK. Then for the background, double click here and make sure you're using this color code, right? So those are the two colors we're using. The next thing I'm going to do is click on gradient like this. I'm going to change this to radial. Click on this and select this first one here. You're going to have something like this, but don't panic. What you should do is come here and click on reverse. Okay. So I'm just going to take this out so that i have a nice gradient okay i'm good with this click ok so we have our nice background just the way we want it now the next thing we're going to be doing is we are going to be implementing um, some shapes into the design click on this and click on the ellipse make sure you hold down your shift when you are drawing uh click on this to remove this All right you can create a new layer on top of this make sure you're holding down shift when you're drawing your ellipse like this okay and uh, move this in place to the middle like this somewhere around here is good okay so the next thing we want to do is fill this shape with gradients so right click and select blending option right on top now, under blending option, we're going to be selecting the gradients command. Now, this is where you can find the gradients. Make sure you click on it and it is grayed out, right? So, this is the interface for the gradients. Make sure you select this first one. That's the first gradient you use the first time. You see why it's important for you not to miss the first step of this video, right? So, if you've missed it, you can go back, duplicate this, Ctrl T, and um, hold down alt key while you are bringing this inside like this and click enter to release it of course i like this the way it is but i'm going to rotate this like this until i get something like this and another quick fix double click on the gradient overlay yeah this one here double click on it it's going to bring out the dialog box for the gradients and click on this part here too and make sure you are selecting this one click click on the color and make sure you tilt towards the whites like this you can see how much that has helped us All right you can take this back a bit for you to have a dominant white or better still i'm gonna leave it this way and click ok click ok for all of that and last one ctrl j again to create the last one this one you're going to take it in just slightly like this and click enter so with this one we're going to be doing something different with this uh ctrl t rotate this like this and uh double click on this gradient overlay we want to tweak this too so click here to bring out the gradient um Okay, so increase this this way or take it down, whichever will still giving me the same outcome. 
So I'm just going to push it from the end like this and uh, make the blue more dominant instead of making the whites more dominant. Then click OK this time. And uh, when you're done, this is what you have. Nice, right? So select these two, Ctrl G, right click on it and convert to smart object like this. Go over to filter and go to noise, add noise. Now copy my settings for this. You don't want to add too many noise or too much noise. Somewhere around the edge, fine. So 4.87 is good enough. Hold down shift, select the first one, select the last one, group all of them. And I'm just going to name this gradient shapes. Simple as that. Make sure you keep your layers clean and easy to identify. Now go on to bring in the image of this player, Usman Dembele. Bring here and um, by the way, congratulations to him. And um, put this down here like this. And click enter like this. Okay. And uh, yes, of course, let's create our shadow for this. Create another layer above the gradient shape. Select your brush. Make sure you are using this brush. Let me show you. Um, I'm selecting a color from the shirts for the foreground color. That's for the shadow. Right? But you just make sure you are using your soft round brush. Make sure the brush is soft right so click enter reduce the opacity like this and um, move this out a bit ctrl j to duplicate this and bring this here okay now what you want to do next is um okay move this out so you can select the three of them and group them again and name this image one like this okay, so you are good to go next thing we're going to do is bring in the next image still the same player but with this there are a couple of things one you can see that this image is quite different from the first one we brought in right let me flip it first you can see that they have two different like um appearance one is darker one is lighter so let's fix that go over to um camera raw filter and um, a couple of things we can do to actually fix this so the first thing you want to do is go over to where you have your where you have your white and increase increase your highlights also like this um also increase your shadows so it's not too dark and to make it pop let's add some textures to it and when you're done just click ok like this and voila this is what you have so this is how you can quickly correct your pictures because in composition you must make sure that the element you're using is matching what you already have or your environment itself to make it make sense so make this bigger and click enter like this and what you want to do with this is because we want our attention on the image in the middle. So we're going to blow out this guy here. So go over to filter, go to blur and Gaussian blur. And use my settings, please. Right. You don't want it to be too much and you don't want it to be too little. Right. So I'm going to stay here and click enter. I'm going to make a duplicate copy of this guy here. And flip this to horizontally to face this side but with this i'm just going to make it bigger again don't forget that the attention should be on the image in the middle right so this is just like um something that gives this whole design a good bump and um, focus on what is in the middle right 
and I don't know why I'm still struggling with this. Uh, okay, increase it finally. And when you're done, click enter like this for you to have this. But with this one, I'm going to increase the level of blur. So what I'm going to do is come over to where you have the Gaussian blur. Yeah, double click on it. And um, increase the value here like this. So you need more blur here. And when you're done, click OK. So this is what you have. So I can now move this backwards a bit for me to have a nice blend of the two images. Okay. Create a new layer here and uh, change this color to white. That's the foreground color. Select your brush. And this is what I meant when I mean select the soft round brush. So in on that general brush, if you scroll down, you see this brush here, this one here. This is what I often use most times, right? But any round brush will actually do the job for you. I just love this in particular. So click once and um, reduce the size of the brush. Click here, click here, and uh, nope, it's not gonna be okay there. Ctrl Z, if you do if you make a mistake, click here. Right, so what you can do with this is, this is before and this is after. So to make the effects much more, um, you, you can just um, duplicate this and set this to screen. That's if you want to increase the intensity of the effects. Okay, so um, the next thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to stay here while I bring in this image. So obviously, drag and drop inside like this. I'm just going to increase the size like this. Click enter. And um, this will have been nice, but for some other day. Adjustment layer, hue and saturation, right click and make sure you create clipping mask. So it's affecting the later image. Reduce the saturation. On other days, you might want to click colorize, but I won't be using that today. I'm just going to use the saturation here. Select the image itself and change the blend mode to what you guessed right, overlay, to create this nice effect, right? You can reduce the opacity like this, and this is what you're left with. Okay. So let's go over to the next step, bring in my text. So I took our time to type all of this so that we don't make this video lengthy unnecessarily. So I'm going to bring this down here like this. And uh, I think this is good. Click enter. Of course, for this down part, I'm just going to add some white here to make sure this name comes out well. So I'm going to stay under the text and create a new layer there or just draw the shape underneath. What you want to do is apply some blur like this, increase the value like this. And make sure it's not too much. Somewhere around here is nice. Click OK, select the mask, your brush, make sure your foreground is set to black, erase the sharp edges like this. Expand this. Uh, let me see. Okay, I still need to expand. But reduce the blur. And uh, okay. Most times, as a designer, you might want to try out some things and see what is actually working for you. Hence, you have to go back and forth to make multiple adjustments, right? So, um, like you can see now, I'm trying to go back and forth, trying to do this. I think I'm okay with this here. What I'm going to do is Ctrl T, hold down Shift, take this up like this. And I can finally bring this down to create this nice effect. All right, guys, if you've liked this video, if you've learned anything, please don't forget to like this video and um, don't forget to subscribe. Of course, share my videos so that YouTube can recommend my videos to other users like you are interested in learning Photoshop.